Well, here we are starting out this episode in a truck on our way to the airport. And we are going to ride some motorcycles. And they're not BMWs. Stick around to see what these bikes are and where we're going to go ride. This is super fun. It's been a long time since I've done a fly and ride trip like this. So we got all our gear packed in here. I don't ever check my helmet because they can get smashed up and I want to protect my head when I get to the other side. Let's see, B gates right over here. Hey. <laughs> We're here in Stowe, Vermont. This is a ski resort here. We got a really cool hotel room here. I didn't bring any motorcycle camping gear, so it's a good thing we have this stove. This place is gonna be ours for the next couple of days. We could pretty much live in this hotel room. Like, it's so big. You're wondering what kind of bikes Eva and I are gonna ride this weekend? I'm gonna be on a brand new Multistrada V4, and Eva is gonna be on the Desert X. I've gotten to ride it once for just a little bit of time, and so I'm excited to spend some good, proper quality time on the Desert X. Alex. Yeah, good to meet you, Alex. Pleasure. You excited yet? Absolutely. We've got two Multistradas, a rally. Ooh, and here's the Desert X coming in. Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. They're pretty, aren't they? This is going to be so much fun. We're going to go exploring some back roads around this area. And then tomorrow is the big group ride. It's going to be a really, really fun time here in Stowe, Vermont. This is a big Multistrada event. So there's going to be a lot of the big Multistradas that are just like pure luxury adventure bikes. And then I've got my hands on a Desert X for the weekend, which sounds super fun. How cool is this? You just get to show up and your bikes are like sitting out here in the parking lot, ready to go. This is my kind of motorcycle. It's like 800 cc's. Do I have that right? 50 million horsepower of pure ADV dirt churning goodness. It's gonna be really exciting to spend some proper time riding on this bike. It's just the kind of thing that I've loved ever since it first came out. And then the Multistrada. So this is brand new this year. This is the Multistrada V4 Rally. And this thing is a technology powerhouse. It is so packed full of features and just all kinds of cool stuff. Plus just tons and tons of comfort features for long haul touring and apparently super capable off-road too. I've never ridden one of these before. Well, Tell me about it. I'm totally excited for you to get to try it out. And uh, we're really you know, proud to bring this to market. It's got the most technology in any of the bikes that we have right now. And um, I can tell you some of the features that are new to the rally this year. Obviously we have these side gills and we have these louvers right here. So it's pushing the hot air from the radiator away from you. And then this slot is taking the cool air and forcing it back into that rider triangle, which is really neat. So you're probably familiar with the previous version where the rear cylinders uh, will deactivate while yep. you're at a stop, yep. at, at idle. Essentially the new system will actually let you start moving before it turns back on. It's cooled now. It, it's, it was just um, a sealed unit right here. Now it has an internal fan that'll keep your phone from overheating while you got it plugged in all day. Wow. Single finger adjustment right there. Once you ride a bike with blind spot detection, it's like, it should be on everything. Both front and rear radar. You can not only set the speed, but you can set the distance you right. want in front of the next right. vehicle. 36,000 mile service interval. How insane is that? <laughs> It really is designed for that long haul touring. Yes. It seems like like yes. so much of this stuff, like, yeah, it's going to be great for a weekend or your regular hometown ride. But like, I mean, long service interval, all these cool comfort features, safety features, all that stuff. I mean, that's like the kind of thing you ride around the world on. Yeah, this is such a high tech motorcycle. And I've never ridden a Ducati before, let alone a motorcycle with as many features as this bike has. And I'll give you some impressions. I am by no means uh, a hardcore technology based motorcycle review person. I just like a bike that works, that feels good, that's reliable that I can do some off-road riding on. We're just gonna go out and try to have some fun today. I wanna get out there today with Eva, explore some of the back roads around Vermont, and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, here we go. Boy, this feels solid, comfortable. Feels very good uh, ergonomics, I like it. Nice, comfortable body position here. No problems with that whatsoever. We've got the one-touch windscreen here, very easy to adjust. Well, as you guys know, I come from a BMW background, 25 years of BMW GS riding, 
And so, to be honest, that's really the only thing that I have to compare this motorcycle to. And my initial seat of the pants first impression is that it feels ergonomically as comfortable as my BMW GS. I don't have any problems. Like right away, I just slipped right into the saddle here. I feel like the bar height is fairly good. Even when I stand up, it feels at the right height. I don't need to feel like I need bar risers on this at all. Uh, the front windscreen is quite a bit larger than my BMWs, so probably some more air resistance there. It's really easy to switch between the ride modes here. I can go from enduro to urban to sport to touring. I'm going to leave it in the touring setting for now. What I would use this bike for the most, long distance, back roads touring with some occasional forays into the gravel. So I've got the adaptive cruise control set right now for the first time, and it should attempt to uh, maintain a medium distance between me and Eva up in front of me, and it seems to be doing that. It's hovering about 30 feet behind her, automatically applying the brakes. And apparently you can actually go through the gears and shift on this motorcycle and it won't disable the cruise control. So there, I just downshifted and it, the cruise control is still working. I could see where this adaptive cruise control would be a nice feature to have on really long rides. And it's also a safety feature as well. Yeah, it's just maintaining a comfortable distance behind Eva. It seems to be working very well. Now this V4 engine definitely has some power got something like 170 horsepower, way more than my GS. Smooth power delivery, I like this. Woo! Yeah, she's got some get up and go. Well, isn't this just supreme riding around the back roads of Vermont? very little cars on the road and just going through these pastoral scenes of agricultural fields and barns and trees. All right, I'm playing around with this adaptive cruise control. I've got it set at 50 miles an hour and I told it to maintain a medium distance behind this trailer up ahead of us. And that's what it seems to be doing. So even if I tell it to go faster, it's still maintaining this distance. Now I'm going to go into the uh, adaptive cruise control and tell it to maintain a near distance. And it picks up in its acceleration and it goes a little bit closer to the trailer. And then when it gets closer, it just kind of brakes automatically and maintains a near distance to the trailer. Let's go down some dirt roads here. I'm going to change the ride mode to enduro. It tells me that the rear ABS is off. This would be a great bike for, obviously, touring purposes, but with the ability to go off onto the dirt roads as well, especially like really nice refined country roads like this that are smooth and graded. Riding this Desert X is awesome. This bike is zesty and fun and light and it's so compact, like it feels like a petite little motorcycle, but holy moly does it have juice. I've had the opportunity to test out the ABS and traction control because I've been hauling ass super hard and then Sterling slows down. I've had to slam on the brakes a little bit and it just tracks perfectly straight in those emergency braking situations, which feels really good. Yeah, this bike is awesome. It's got some juice. I've got it in sport mode right now, which is changing the throttle response, and which is great. It really doesn't mind hanging out high on the RPMs to give you a little bit of that crunch and compression when you're going around the turns. I really like that. But it's also been super forgiving if you're a gear too high or a gear too low. I just feel like it's just happy just 
turning along one way or the other. This bike is great. It is fast, it's light, it is real flicky and fun to ride. I've had it in sport mode all day and it likes to get up and go. And it's just really easy to ride, which really impresses me. And I'm excited to spend some more time on the dirt on it. Well, this has been a very fun afternoon with the Ducati Multistrada V4, my first ride on this bike. And I have to say that it's been a very positive experience. I really feel comfortable on this motorcycle. I like the ergonomics of it. Comfortable and refined, like something that I could ride a very long distance on. Today was just a very short ride. Now we're gonna head back to the hotel. There's a little off-road training class going on this afternoon. People that don't have a lot of off-road riding experience getting a, a really quick course in some of the basics of off-road riding. Okay, here we go into the test course. We're gonna go through the cones here first. Fun day, wasn't it, honey? A little bit of riding, a little bit of off-road training. Did yeah. you learn anything? You learned how to fall off a desert axe? <laughs> Listen, I have a goal of dropping a motorcycle in all 50 states in the United States. The Northeast is just really bad for your hair. Uh. <laughs> so how fun is this? This is the Ducati cocktail hour. So after riding motorcycles all day, you get to go have drinks and food with your friends, which is my favorite. They have all kinds of good food and drinks and a whiskey tasting. Ooh. Ducati's really nice. I have They're to say so that. Nice. They are so nice to work with. Really, really good nice. people. I hate to even use the word practical or logical or sensible with motorcycling because it's not why we do it. We do it because we love it. We do it because there's this weird emotional connection that we have with this machine and all the people as well. But it's amazing to see how this has evolved. You get to ride motorcycles all day with your friends, and then in the evening you get to hang out and eat and drink and continue the conversations that you had at the stop signs. I love this. So today is the big group ride. And we're going to be going up Mount Washington, which is an iconic location here on the East Coast, known for its extreme weather. So we could be in an adventure. There's the Ducati truck over there. Let's see what we get to ride today. Multistrada Rally. This is the bike I'm going to be riding today. My bike is getting prepared. They're like cleaning it and putting little yes. stickers on it. Look at all these Ducatis. Everybody's getting their bikes ready, getting their luggage put on, getting their riding gear put on. Sterling hates carrying my stuff, but today he's being a gentleman and allowing me put, to put my rain gear in his little pannier there. A little bit overcast today. We'll see what kind of weather we get. It could be interesting when we get up to Mount Washington. We've got about 35 Ducati riders here. They're gonna be taking us on a guided tour of the Northeast. It's gonna be so fun. So let's get on the bikes now and hit the road. Here we go. Now I'm not a big group ride person. I like to ride more independently by myself. So this should be out of my comfort zone, so to speak. There's Eva on my left. She's on the Multistrada rally today as well. When we go down the road and this multitude of people traveling in mass down the street, I get the sense that people look at us a little bit differently. It gets people's attention in a different way and it's kind of fun to be a part of that. So far we have went about 60 miles. After our first stop for gas, I think we've got about 80 more miles to go until the next stop. Well, I've got a little bit of rain coming down and I'm cycling through the modes here. 
I don't see a rain mode. We've got enduro, touring, sport, urban. You can see the blind spot indicator going off in my left hand mirror. That means that there's someone in my blind spot. A handy feature to have for sure. And here we are, the Mount Washington Auto Road. I think we'll have a little rest stop here and then make our way to the top of Mount Washington. So this is our second stop of the day. We are at the base of Mount Washington. It's known for extreme weather. The highest wind speed ever recorded on planet Earth was recorded up here on Mount Washington, and that's where we're gonna go next. We're at 4,000 feet right now, going through the switchbacks. What a beautiful ride up the mountain. We're getting into the cloud cover now. Can't see anything down below. It's moments like this when I feel like I made a really good career choice. How cool is it to get flown out to the other side of the country, have a brand new motorcycle waiting for you, and get to go out and have a weekend like this, all at the expense of a company like Ducati. To be invited to an event like this is sort of a, a capstone or a reminder of how long and hard I've worked to be able to do things like this. How cool is that? All right, we have made it up to the summit of Mount Washington. We're Look on... at this spectacular view on top of Mount Washington. Yeah, we're on Mount Washington. Have you been here before? I have. I've never driven up before, though. Me and my ah. dad climbed up it when I was in high school. Like human power? Human powered. Wow. Yeah, right we did on. an alpine start. We camped out and hiked up and down in a day. It was awesome. So if you come up here, you've got to be prepared to walk up the last little bit. Where the highest wind speed ever recorded on Earth was on top of Mount Washington. This is so different than the desert where I live. It feels like I'm in Scotland. It's been a nice ride today. It's been a very civil ride. It's gotta be one of the smoothest group rides I have ever done. Yeah, Being yeah. This many people, no issues no, no drama drama no crashes everybody no hot doggers no, trying to pretty smooth these guys are pretty mature riders they're all grown up <laughs> it's because ducatis are not their first motorcycle so the big question is how does this bike compare to the bmw 1200 gs and would i be happy switching over to a bike like this or, or even just using a bike like this on a long motorcycle ride. I've been riding BMW GS since 1998. I've had three of them in 25 years. My current motorcycle is a 1200 GS Rally. It's seven years old. I have 70,000 miles on it. I've been really happy with that bike. And that's really all I can compare this to, and it's a good comparison because they're in the same class, the same category. I think I would do just fine on this motorcycle, absolutely. I don't see why not. It's a premium, comfortable, reliable, safe adventure motorcycle. It does have some more bells and whistles than the GS. The adaptive cruise control, the higher service interval, more horsepower, 
There are a few things that I like about the GS though. I like the shaft drive, less maintenance. I like the low center of gravity with the boxer engine and the dual cylinder, the dual cylinder boxer engine down low to the ground. I also like that when I tip over, the cylinders help keep the bike halfway up so it's easier to pick up. So it would be a trade-off. There would be some pluses and some minuses, but for my experience this weekend riding this motorcycle, I don't see why I wouldn't have a good time riding the Multistrada V4 on a long trip. And perhaps I'll get to do that in the future. That's something that I would like to do. I would like to take some long trips on different motorcycles and maybe mix up what you see on my channel a little bit more. Swap different bikes out, ride different bikes, see how they compare to one another for motorcycle travel and touring and camping. So you never know, there might be some Ducati Multistrada V4 action in the future on the Motorcycle Travel Channel. Thanks to Ducati's invitation to have myself and Eva here for their Alpine tour in Vermont. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this look into the world of Ducati, the back roads of Vermont, what it's like to attend one of these client appreciation riding events, at least in Ducati style, the way that Ducati does it. A first for me, and I would say overall that this has been a very first rate experience from their personal treatment to their organization, planning and preparation of everything from our flights to the hotel, to the motorcycles that have been waiting for us, to the event itself with these guided rides, GPS tracks, food, drink, everything you would expect has just been a, a first rate experience. Oh, did you have a good time? I had such a great day today. It was so much fun. This bike was awesome, man. Did you like yours? Absolutely. I can yeah. keep riding it. We did a 350 mile day today and I could keep going. I feel easily, easily like, like this is the kind of bike I could ride a long ways, many days in a row. Absolutely. It's effortless riding. Well, I had such a fun time here at the Ducati Alpine Tour, riding around on the Multistrada with Eva and all the other Ducatisti. So many Ducatis here, I've never seen so many before. It was an eye-opening experience for me to be on this bike. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about this bike as much as I did, riding it for a couple of days. And I encourage you to come back again for more adventures. We'll see you next time.